Welcome to another adventure in Australian literature. And I promised you, I promised you, we're starting with the big one. We're starting with the big one. We're doing Patrick White. We are starting with the big man, finally. Um, it's 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 a bit daunting to start start up Patrick White. Uh, he's a big name. He's a big name. But before we get started, remember there is our shop. There is our our shop on our website and our shop on our Redbubble shop, both of which have really great things for you to check out: books, uh, writing services, merch, some great designs. If you if you've watched some of our Buster stuff, there's a lot of Buster stuff on the Redbubble site. But um, yeah, that's that for support come along have a look at the shops and so now we start we are starting patrick white and we are starting patrick white with his fourth novel i'll explain why we're starting with his fourth novel we start patrick white with his fourth novel we are starting with the tree of man we're starting with The Tree of Man. The reason we are starting with The Tree of Man, it's his fourth novel. Um, we're not starting with his first and we're not starting with his second or third because um, his first has only been available for a little while, less than, I think about 10 years now, because he, he, he published it and then he refused to allow it to be, go into reprint. He was kind of um, unsure of it and he had used a lot of people that he knew and was a little bit worried that they would get wind of it and be insulted. His second novel, um, The Living and the Dead, I think that one's called, um, that's set in England and again it's a novel, he, he didn't disown it but he sort of ignored it most of his life because and I've started I've, I have started reading it I haven't read it the whole way through because it's a if it was a piece of interwar wind interwar writing from anyone else it would be a perfectly fine piece of interwar English writing as a Patrick White you sort of find yourself wanting more it's also the only novel that's entirely set in England uh, with an English cast and that I think um, he really it, it wasn't it wasn't his thing it's not what we come to know Patrick White as. Third novel is The Aunt's Story. The Aunt's Story is actually the novel I started reading Patrick White with because it's short. It's also horrendously difficult. <laughs> so once I once I'd read The Aunt's Story everything was easy. But so we're going to start with the Tree of Man, which is actually where you really should start with Patrick White. Okay. Um, interestingly, coming off the back of a video talking about oranges are not the only fruit that uses Genesis as its set as a as a central theme. The Tree of Man is sort of a Genesis-ish story, though to overlay biblical onto anything Australian is not going to happen but it is a sort of um a, a beginnings of all things or at least a beginnings of things in terms of white settlement so so it's it's it is it is a very interesting book it has that mythic proportion that you get out of out of a story like genesis so it is it is that it it is also 20th century it's not it doesn't go back as early as you would think in terms of its its history it's not it's not a colonial story he's writing about Australia he's writing about Australia that goes up to mid-century Australia so this is a 1955 book um, this is a book that he wrote after his return to Australia Patrick White was like Martin Boyd. He came from a very wealthy Australian family with very large pastoral land holdings up around Scone in northern 
sort of central New South Wales in the Hunter region. Uh, north, yeah, around the Hunter. It's now, and now a lot of uh, coal mining up there. But uh, he, his family were pastoralists. They had, he went to England. He spent a lot of time in England, educated in England, was writing his first couple of novels in England. He spent time trying to be a playwright in England. And then after the war, Patrick White came back to Australia. Came back to Australia with his partner, Manaloy Lanskaras, who was a Greek man he met during his time, his service in the Second World War. Um, and they came back to Australia and they settled in Castle Hill. They came back to cringe Australia. They came back to Donald Horn's Australia, the, the Australia that Donald Horn calls the lucky country. Patrick White did not do what most other wealthy Australians did, which was go back to England and stay there for most of their lives. Martin Boyd did that. Martin Boyd's Langton Quartet is about Australia, but he spent very little time in Australia. Patrick White felt he needed to be here. He needed to be here. He needed to write about here and he needed to be here. And you get something, you get his, his great books. His great books are mid 20th century, sort of 50s, 60s, 70s are where his great books sit in, in Australian literature. His final book was, he was about 1989 and I don't think that was finished. But his great books are that post-war Australia. Um, so he wrote the out story, which was, ah, this is what I'm supposed to write. I'm supposed to write about my own country. The first third of that is set in Australia. The second parts of that are set overseas as that character travels. We will do the out story, but not straight away. Tree of Man is entirely set in Australia. Tree of Man relates to the lives of Stan and Amy Parker. Stan Parker has land that his he inherits when his parents die and he goes out to his land and starts to clears the land builds a farm marries the girl has children raises his farm and has a life a perfectly ordinary little life and Yet, this is not just a little life. The Tree of Man is about authenticity. That's one of the big things that, that, that Patrick White really felt that he had to speak about. He felt that Patrick White came to an Australian landscape which was very dominated by the bush. This is a bush book. So this would go in our bush books, which is another reason I started with this one. Um, but it's a, it's a world that's dominated by the bush. It is a world that looks outward. And the outward looking, we will talk about in our next book very much. It's a world that looks outward to other places, other people, other, other things. It is a very parochial country that he's come back to and it's a lucky country it is a country that is exploiting the land and what it can give it without necessarily developing anything further and that's something that you do see in here uh, but it's also talking is also coming to a literary landscape where the writing is workmanlike um, one of the very famous books that I don't think we will ever get done because I can't finish it is George Johnson's My Brother Jack. And the reason I can't finish it is because it's boring as hell. The Donald Horn called in the lucky country the concept of the intellectual in Australia was the journalist and the school teacher. He was writing in the 1960s. 
And that is sort of the level of what prose was in Australian writing before Patrick White. Yes, you can have some great writing. You can have the Kylie Tennant. You can have a Miles Franklin. But for every Kylie Tennant and every Miles Franklin, there's a hell of a lot of George Johnson's. There's a lot of writing that we don't even bother with. There is a lot of writing that is providing a foreign publisher with a concept of Australia that will sell overseas. Or there is a lot of writing like Christina Steed, who again, I would say is, she's less straight workman-like journalistic prose, but I do find she is very grounded in realism. That's the other thing about Australian writing at this time. It was very grounded in realism. You can see that in Kylie Tennant. You can see that in Christina Steed. Christina Steed had to mangle a lot of her work to suit the needs of foreign publishers, which has diminished her um, influence as a modern Australian writer because it's very hard to look at her as Australian. It's what are you saying about Australia? Patrick White did something radically different. He lived here, he wrote about here, and he wrote about here with an incredibly baroque, beautiful and spiritual language. Patrick White's novels are not religious. Australian novels on the whole are not religious and that that can make them a little difficult to interpret for uh, outside readers because you do need to fully I think appreciate the concept that Australia is a very secular country so it always has been a very secular country religion has been here there have been religious splits at various times certain religious groups have certainly held on to their uh, religion as a as a form of identity a lot more closely than others uh, simply because it was uh, a, a form of, there's a, certainly a form of resistance in there. Um, but these are not religious books and you won't find a lot of religious allusions in them. But they're spiritual. There's a, one of the images in this book and, it, and, and in typical Typical white fashion, it is both crude, grotesque and profound. And it's the concept of God in a gob of spittle, that, that, that the spiritual must pervade everything in order for things to have meaning. Otherwise, what are you? If you don't bring a spiritual component into the world, which is what Stan Parker struggles to do then what are you nothing you're you're just economic an economic unit you're just part of the machine you're just a pleasure-seeking beast Stan and Amy's children are um, his son is consumed by money I, I believe he's a bookie. It's been a while since I've read this. Uh, it's, I believe he's a bookie. Um, his daughter is, again, consumed by the concept of status and social rank. Stan's wife is also seduced by the material over the spiritual and has an affair with a travelling salesman. the abandonment of the spiritual is seen as something very, very wrong and that a person's life is going to be less up without the spiritual. This is not, uh, he's not a writer of dogma. There is no dogma in this, but it's, it's that there has to be that elevating component and that is something that Patrick White is wanting to bring to the Australia that he sees in the 1950s post-war. It's 
this is the country that is it's not it's not doing anything it's 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 enjoying its material success while not developing anything not developing anything this is the the country that makes compromises because it's cheap cheap compromise probably the biggest most obvious cheap compromise that you can think of if you're from New South Wales is the Sydney Opera House is a cheap compromise oh we want a world-class opera house Ooh, how much is that gonna cost mm, let's just make sure it looks pretty the opera house has been struggling with its sound internal sound for as long as it's existed because it had a cheap compromise the original was too expensive and that is the kind of attitude that Patrick White is railing against you don't make cheap compromise because cheap compromise results in a cheap life Stan Parker is is there to live a rich life it may not always work there are floods there are fires there are all sorts of things he goes off to war he 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 has adultery in his marriage all these things happen but at the end stan parker has a rich life he has a life that is not not made lesser by compromise patrick white is one of those writers that we're scared of in this country we are so scared of him that we don't read him and when i look up academic papers on Patrick White, the majority of them are written by people from overseas. They are not written by Australians. I did, um, in my, my undergraduate degree, we didn't do any Patrick White. Occasionally, Tree of Man turns up on the HSC list, but it's not all the time, and it's an optional part of the HSC list. You don't have to do Patrick White. But if you want to write Australia, you have to, you have to tackle it. He's big, he's intimidating, but he's intimidating because he makes you look at the parts of your, the national identity that we try not to look at. The compromise bits, the bits where we did mediocre things the bits where we were mediocre people, the bits where we turned away rather than face the reality of things. That's what Patrick White refused to do. He refused to turn away and go back to England. He stayed here and he looked at it and he said, look at this, look at this, look at this. This is what you are. This is who you are. And that's really intimidating for people. But it wasn't until I read Patrick White that I felt like, oh, wow, there is a place in this country for me. There is a place where I can be in this country. There is a way for me to be in this country. If you want to write Australia, you have to read Patrick White. There's no whips or buts. If you go read Patrick White, start with The Tree of Man. It is the most accessible piece of Patrick White. And it is, for all the talk of his Baroque writing and his purple prose, it is nowhere near as difficult as reading Henry James. It is rich writing. But it is not utterly impossible, and it doesn't feel imposed from elsewhere. It doesn't feel like someone else's writing. It does feel this is Australian writing. This doesn't feel like the writing of another country imposed on top of the Australian. See, it, it, it served... This was, a, this was written at a time when people still thought of themselves as British. British. 
until 1946 there was no such thing as an Australian citizen because we didn't have Australian citizenship as such. You had to be able to get British, it was hard to be naturalised and when the um, large numbers of post-war migrants came through the system was changed so that they could be naturalised as Australian because previous to this you had to be naturalised as a British subject. That was really hard but the this allowed people to be naturalised as Australians so they were it, it made it because we were bringing these large numbers of migrants in it it helped with the um, helped with that integration into society if you can be in, if you can become an actual Australian you're not just here as a guest you actually belong that's really important so this was a time when people still called Britain home people who had been born here called Britain home because of this long association and Patrick White is here saying no this is home this is home this is home and you need to accept that this is home you need to see this as home because if you don't it's not going to you're 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 not going to live a full life and I think that's partly as a man who had lived in England, who had seen what it was like to be an Australian in England. Um, although he travelled a lot backwards and forwards over the rest of his life, he never lived permanently in England again. He visited, but he always came back here. Here was home. This country was home. And the books stay in Australia. Um, the Twinborn Affair moves around, but that's a, a very different book, very particular book that we will have a look at later. But the majority of the books stay here and they're about Australia because he's, he's saying, look at it, look at it. Without the sentimentality, without the romance, look at it. And that's why you should read The Tree of Man. So I will see you again another time with another adventure in Australian literature. Bye. If you would like to support this channel, come across to the Black Hockey Press website, www.blackhockeypress.com.au, where you will find books and other writing services to help with your writing.